December 28, Johannesburg, South Africa. I had made plans to go to Kenya and enjoy New Year's Eve. Very interesting. I wanted to experience New Year's Eve in a very different way. And I wanted to do it the Kenyan way this time. I was quickly on my way to the airport, driving, very excited. I was so looking forward to get to Kenya. O Al Tambo Airport, arguably the best airport in Africa. So we are at the airport, O Al Tambo Airport. I had done my checking very quickly and I was rushing to immigration. On a queue to immigration, there was hundreds of people like hundreds of people many people excited looking to go out and go and have a good time it's good to see africans wanting to exploit africa <music> fellas i love flying this is one of the best feelings ever when you know you're just about to fly it's amazing i was really really excited <music> and on my way to kenya i was so excited you have no idea Fellas, the flight was scary, let me tell you this, you know, it was shaky, it was really scary. But after four hours of flight, eventually, we landed in Nairobi. It was exciting. Kenya, at last, my excitement all over the place. I was looking forward to this. I really just wanted to have a good time and see how Kenyans party. Jumbo Kenya does lanes. I'm excited. So I was precisely waiting for a driver named Limo from a contact from a friend he was suggested to us and then Limo came he picked up the bags and we were on our way to Nairobi first impression the road to the airport looked very good congratulations Kenya driving through Nairobi was interesting at the first sight it made me feel very hopeful for Africa my team and I were on our way to the hotel. It's called the Sankara Hotel. And Thomas Sankara, for those of you who don't know, was a great man of Africa. It's great to see that Nairobi, Kenya, a different country, honor such a great person. A beautiful place to be. Yeah. We're here. It feels good. Very interesting. First thing first, you could see that security was quite tight. They had to make sure that you had no weapon. And then I met this lovely lady at the counter. She was very, very kind. We were offered a wet, hot piece of cloth to just freshen up, clean and dry your hand. It smells really good. So I got this thing that I like to do. As soon as I get to a place, I will walk around to just understand what is what, what is where. Very nice. So I'm turning tonight. I'm going to Nice to see Africa in a different perspective. Africa is not just a hungry little kid with a big stomach and flies flying around his face. I mean, get this Africa too. It's very nice. That's scary. To me, that's scary. Look at that. Beautiful room, very clean, luxurious. I really liked it. I couldn't get a suite the same day because apparently they were all fully booked. But I got this room that was really, really nice. I enjoyed it. The lounge had delicious food, amazing vibe, and extreme diversity of things to eat. And trust me, fellas, I love my food. I don't play with that. Good 
morning, Nairobi. Yeah, it's beautiful, very sunny. Look at that. Getting ready to, first of all, change um, hotels. Not very happy with, um, I mean, with a, uh, how can I even say it? It's a nice hotel, but the swimming pool is too public. You know, meaning people can just come from nowhere and go and sit by the swimming pool because there is a bar. So it's not very comfortable. You, know, you want to be a little bit private. So there you go. The issue was that the swimming pool was beautiful. I love water. However, I did not appreciate the fact that random people could just come to the swimming pool because there is a bar next to the swimming pool and just chill by the bar while watching you as a client swimming in the swimming pool. I like privacy, you know, I like luxurious privacy. So I quickly made a decision to leave the hotel and go somewhere else. Find another hotel where there's more privacy. Nothing wrong with Sankara, beautiful place, lovely service, but I had to go. But before I leave with my team, I had to have breakfast. The variety of food was amazing. Chicken, fish, meat, everything you want. Porridge, bacon. No, I don't eat bacon. I don't eat pork. Bacon. I don't eat red meat anymore. But yeah, I'm just saying so you can know. A variety of cheese. I mean, don't get me wrong. Sankara really is a beautiful place. Uh, certainly one of the best hotels in Nairobi. So this man's name is Peter, great guy, very kind, he was our tour guy. We were going on an excursion just to see what's up in Nairobi. Really? I'm Peter. Peter? Yeah, Valley From Rock Tours. Valley Rock Tours yeah. in Nairobi. In Nairobi, Kenya. Absolutely. So where, where are we going today? We are going to the Giraffe Center. The Giraffe Center? And proceed to the Bombers of Kenya. Okay. And maybe some other interesting places you will find it there. Awesome. What do you expect? Uh, traditional dances in the Bomas of Kenya. Mm -hmm. In the giraffe center you are going to experience a very good experience of feeding the giraffe yeah. one on one using your hand. Mm -hmm. Then you get some explanation. Awesome stuff. Dressing. So Peter was our guy for the day. Okay, the car was not the most luxurious, but a brother's trying to make some money so we have to support him. Welcome to Nairobi. Nairobi is a Maasai name meaning cool waters. Cool waters? Yeah. Okay, like like cold water. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay to, to, the, uh, to the community it means waters. Waters. Yeah. Okay. But uh, generally as, as, as grammatical is water. Okay. Yeah. How's life in Nairobi? Arrive in Nairobi is very interesting. Formerly oh, Nairobi was a uh, Nairobi was like uh, was a swamp. A swamp. Yeah, it was rehabilitated using the eucalyptus trees. Peter was very outspoken, and I really liked it. It was very easy to communicate with him. Very talkative, very interesting, very comical sometimes. Great experience. It's amazing how Africans don't let other people pass. This is crazy. All across Africa. This is crazy. This is the fire brigade and an ambulance. There's clearly something wrong happening somewhere. Let him pass. Are they not supposed to let him pass first? So what we saw right there was um, um, how do you call it? Um, a fire, fire brigade. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fire brigade trying to drive and behind the fire brigade's truck was an ambulance. So obviously, certainly, there must be something happening somewhere. But the crazy thing is nobody's budging. Nobody's moving their car to allow them to pass. <laughs> and this is crazy. It's not just in Nairobi that you see that. You see that in many African places. The Giraffe Center is a very popular place in Kenya. 
I'm sure you've seen some pictures on Instagram where people take pictures with giraffe and stuff like that. So I was very curious to see and I was excited to be there. First thing first, you don't want to infect the giraffe with your dirty hand. You have to wash your hand first before you get inside. You can see from the queue, there was a lot of people waiting to get inside. So before you get inside the giraffe enclosure, you have to get your ticket, then walk inside. And my guy Peter was so cool, he said, hey, you wait here, I'm gonna go get the ticket for you. You don't have to do it. So we're just waiting for our tour guard to, tour guide to pay so we can go in. Looks like uh, a lot of people come here every single day. It's good for Kenya, good business, good tourism. Well organized, so far so good. So let's see, we're going to touch the tongue of the giraffe. And finally, it was my turn to get inside. Yay! Let's go touch the tongue of the giraffe. So, fellas, like I said earlier, this is a place where people come and feed the giraffe. And this giraffe clearly have a very good life. This is food for the giraffe. I don't know what the hell this thing is. But this giraffe have a very nice life. And from the first look, you could see thousands of Europeans and Americans feeding the giraffe. If soft life had a name, this is soft life for you. So, <laughs> hold on a second. These giraffes, they do nothing for living. They're just being pretty and they get fed. Like, get fed? Yeah, the feeling of the giraffe tongue on your hand is very gloomy. Not a nice feeling at all. After touching the giraffe's tongue, of course you have to wash your hands. Go, that was cool. Touching the giraffe's tongue completed, it was time to do something different. All right, so I want to taste some of Kenya's bananas. See if it's the pig. Good. What's your name? Okay, so since I've been here, I've been using internet from the hotel and stuff, and it's not working for me because I have so much files to access, so many things to send. I need the SIM card urgently, even though there was a place where we could have purchased SIM card at the airport, I didn't do that. So right now we need to drive and find a SIM card, a local SIM card that functions. Before getting a SIM card, we discovered this very amazing place. African stuff, I just had to look. What I like about this place, it's very well organized. It's felt like many art creators, many entrepreneurs came together, rented a place and they operate together. Like one person. You could see anything you're looking for. From masks, cups, and bands. One of the first things I noticed about Kenyans, these people are very friendly. Nice doing business with you. <laughs> Fellas, it was extremely hot. It was burning hot. I just wanted something to drink so I can cool down a little bit. Look at the friendliness of this lady. Just listen to her. Hello, how are you? Do you have a juice? Uh, fresh ones? Fresh one. Yeah, we have the fresh ones. Like fresh ones. What juice do you have? We have mango juice, we have banana. Mm -hmm. Mango juice? Yes. Or oh, can I mix mango and banana? Yeah, mix that. Can I mix mango and banana? How can you not love this? After having a drink and cooling down a little bit, we were on our way to our next point of our excursion. Visiting the tribal history of Kenya. Do you want to tell us where we are? We are in Bomas of Kenya. We are in Bomas of Kenya. Yeah. What, what can we expect from this place? Uh, we expect first to visit the village. As we await for the cultural dances, we will be starting at uh, 2.30 p.m. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes, I know, fellas. I got nice legs. Thank you. So we were to visit some samples of Kenyan villages and also assist to traditional dancing. I was excited about that. So every hut was representative of a tribe. It was specific to them and apparently Africans' huts were not all similar. So I got inside to experience as much hut as I could. Maybe for the kids and that's for the, for the parents. So when the parents are doing their story, their kids are listening. <laughs> oh man, that's traumatizing. These kids might, might have been traumatized, like hearing parents doing stories. Yeah. I mean, fellas, there's no privacy. How can you have kids in this? Uh, this is crazy. It's insane how older people used to live life. Apparently, husbands could have many wives, and each wife had their own hut. First wife's hut. <laughs> yeah, it's usually at the middle. The middle, the middle yeah. of the village. Yeah. But the first wife's hut was the biggest, the most glamorous, the most luxurious. I went inside to experience it. <laughs> it's big. Look at that. She got two beds. First wife gets too bad. So the first wife was treated nice. nice. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay. So there's a big house for the first wife. For the first wife. Yeah. Interesting. Let's go. The house was made of cow's dunk. Very solid technology. It was very hard. I was very impressed. So see the house looks like it's made out of dunk from uh, from cows. Light green. The smell is gone, but yeah, it's cow's dung. Mm. I mean, so there are many versions of cement. You don't need expensive stuff to build your house. You, know, you can just use cow's dung. How nice is it? These fellas were some of the best experience I've ever had. Seeing different Kenyan tribes dance in front of us to the most traditional way possible. I loved it. As we were enjoying, this lady came and just pulled me. She wanted me to dance and I just couldn't disappoint her. So I went to show my amazing skills. Such a great feeling. Not a Kenyan, but feeling, feeling accepted. A warm feeling of belonging. After all, aren't we all Africans? After sitting there for about an hour watching all these brothers display some of the most amazing choreographies, it was time to leave. <sighs> good morning world! Hope you're doing good. I just woken up early in the morning. So this is my second day in Nairobi. Like you know I changed hotels. I mean, uh, ready some hotel right now. Uh, the food was really really good last night like i ate they gave me fish with ugali and ugali is like um a very typical african dish like most africans a lot of africans actually eat ugali it just has different names it's made out of maize and water and stirred um like in south africa it's called pap in some places of central africa it's called fufu it's called uh, yeah different things so you know what ugali is all right, so I'm gonna take a shower. I'm looking forward to go have some breakfast uh, and then see how the day goes. I actually wanted to chill today around the pool, but the pool is not very private, so it's not a good thing. Remember the reason why I left the previous hotel. So hopefully it's gonna be good today. Um, yeah, if things don't work out the way I want, you know what? I'm gonna try to make the most of it. After all, we're in Nairobi. Let's go. Hi guys! 
so I'm dressed in, as you can see, I got this from the shops. Um, so I feel good. <laughs> That was me playing silly baggers, mocking YouTube girls. Crazy, yeah? Anyway, these are my Jesus shoes. I'm gonna wear Jesus shoes. Look at that. I think it's compliments really good. Let's try them on. I've never worn anything like this before. Okay, let's see. Look at that. Nice, eh? Oh, man. Man's gotta look good, man. I look good. I look good, man. You see that? Man's gotta look good. Looking good ain't just a woman thing. Man's got to look good. And by the way, you know when you have a man who looks good, he knows how to take care of a woman. Ask my woman. <laughs> Let's go. Breakfast time. And it was time for breakfast. It was just the very first time at the Radisson Hotel. I was very excited. Again, fellas, me and food, it's a love story. I love my food. So as you know, your brother's got to look good, you know. So I needed to go to town, to the mall, and find a barber so I can look fresh. After being stuck in traffic jam once again in Nairobi, we just had to make peace with it. It's a big city. With the amount of construction happening right now, this is absolutely normal. And then we got to one of the biggest malls in Nairobi named Two Rivers. I was very excited to see what Nairobi had to offer. The first look did not disappoint. I was flying like a bird. So I'm at the barber shop. Nairobi. <laughs> Men's gotta look good. Make a shirt clean. And it's, and it's Michael. Is it Michael, right? Yeah, Michael. I know, fellas. I'm losing some hair. And guess what? I wanna go to Turkey. I actually want to go to Turkey and get my hair fixed. <laughs> but as you know, a brother still got to look good. So we did just that. So let's talk about this. Um, I had my hair cut. The treatment was really good. I would say beyond my expectation, no doubt about it. Uh, these people are real hustlers, you know, trying to sell you other things, you know, but yeah. So now I need a SIM card. Uh, I need a SIM card and that's why I'm here at this mall. I don't know what it's called. To or something, I believe. Hopefully I get a SIM card here. Yeah. function. You can't function with no SIM card, unfortunately. I look good, man. I look good. You see that? Yeah. So they suggested Safari Com. We are at Safari Com office. Hopefully, we can get good service. Okay. So we can't get a SIM card here because. Apparently they don't sell SIM cards. We have to go to Garden City. This is called what? This is City something. Whatever this mall is. Um, Garden City to here is 45 minute drive. That's a long, long time. So I guess that's what needs to be done. If I need a SIM card, that's bad, I do. Yeah. And then I thought about it again, fellas. I could have just gotten a SIM card from the airport. Here I find myself in Nairobi looking for a SIM card from mall to mall, mall to mall. I had to run around trying to find the SIM card. So 
So in the street of Nairobi, yeah, it's been a long, long day trying to get SIM cards, trying to find saloons, it's just crazy. So right now, I have to go to another mall called Jamia Mall. Yeah, like you've seen, we've hopped malls and malls and malls. It's just insane. And this lady is going to show us where Jamia Mall is. Um, yeah, this lovely lady just decided to help out. So that's good. <laughs> The biggest mall in Nairobi. This is Westgate Mall. All right. Still looking for a SIM card. It's about seven, seven fifteen. Still looking for a SIM card. This is insane. Security is very tight. You get at the entrance of the mall, you're gonna be searched, you're gonna check your bag. And I believe this is because of uh, some terrorist attack that happened in Kenya a while back, a few years back. Um, it's tiring, but well, I guess they have to do what they have to do to keep people safe. So, yeah. Westgate Mall looks shiny. After looking for a full day from place to places, we finally found our SIM card at Westgate Mall. It was night time. So we here at Safari Club and getting a SIM card at last. After hours and hours of driving. So at 8 p.m. in Kenya, you can still get a shop for talking. You can buy a SIM card. I got my number, my Kenyan number. <laughs> Thanks to Safaricom, what's, what's, what's the mall? Westgate Mall. Safaricom, Westgate Mall. Guys, I'm glad. So finally I had my SIM card. I could load some data and be connected to the internet. It was a good feeling. It's December 31st, 2003. Last day of the year, we are in Nairobi, Kenya, Radisson Hotel, uh, getting ready for um, the day. I'm gonna go have breakfast now, then run to town because I said I want to go, uh, you know, enjoy and have a good time today. There's a branch, a branch is like, I mean, yeah, you can Google what branch is. I think it's like a little party, so anyway, whatever. Uh, breakfast first, then run to town, to the mall, go find some white and white combination. You know, still gotta look good. You know, I'm sure my brother, my king and brothers are we will. Okay, let's go. Thirty first of December, Nairobi, very hot. We were running to town to try to find white clothes. Did you see that Muzungu on the motorbike? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm trying to get something white, but yeah, it's a mission. Not easy. Uh, I see some white stuff here, but not exactly what I'm looking for. So a little bit more limited. It's a little bit limited, just some t-shirt, there's no white pants or white jeans or white shorts, so it's just white t-shirt. So yeah, not sure what to do. <laughs> this is probably shop number five looking for stuff for white. <laughs> 
not easy no white stuff just need a short a pair of shorts a t-shirt or something these are the only white shorts you can get you and it says lakers and you don't want that i don't wear basketball shorts no. like i said it's not just about wearing white it's about wearing white that really looks royal after walking around looking for white clothes for hours, I was exhausted. We needed a break. Yeah, or else I just would have fallen on the ground. Yeah, I'm extremely hungry. And when I'm hungry, I don't function properly. So I made a quick stop to get some to eat before we proceed looking for white. Please, Mr. President, can you allow the country to have some white shirt and white shirt? So I was begging Mr. President to allow the country to have some nice white stuff for sale. Thirty first of December, the day had arrived. I got my white stuff. And man, I look good. I was excited on our way to the party. Remember, the reason why I came to Kenya was to experience New Year's Eve with Kenyans. I wanted something different. I wanted to see our Kenyans party on New Year's Eve. So I went to Oyster Bay with a lot of expectation. Very excited. I was looking forward to the night. Going to be fire. Good impression, great light, beautiful place, very interesting. And the party started, fellas. We were here. Everybody was on. All white party, as you can see, people dressed to kill. The DJ was on point, waiters on point, most beautiful waitresses I've ever seen. As you know, I'm a boss, I'm a king, wherever I go, I leave my marks, I had to do just that. Hear my bottles. But I very quickly got into a sense of something very negative. I felt like Kenyans were just sitting, doing nothing. But, that, but this for me was a bit of a turn off. Music was good, the place was lit, but people were seated. The 31st of December, New Year's Eve, I heard a lot of good things about Kenyan people and the way they party, and I was here for just that. To be honest with you, the game is easy. The man that pops the most bottles is the man of the night. January 1st, 2024 time for breakfast <clears throat> okay nairobi 31st of december my tech what what do i think um to the positive it was really nice very beautifully made place very clean beautiful lights beautiful setup very big you know just enough for a lot of people to actually come together and have a good time i really enjoyed that um the waitresses were very very kind 
and you could see the kindness came from the bottom of their hearts. It's not because they were expecting anything from the patron or the, you know, they were not expecting anything. You know, they were genuinely kind and very helpful. But hey, Kenyans, why don't you dance? What is wrong with you? This is the 31st of December. It comes once a year. And as far as I know, most Africans are dancing, are jumping off their seats, are screaming. Have you seen South Africans? If you're not going to dance, stay home, you know, stay home, watch TV. No, you killed it for me, man. I mean, I paid my ticket to come all the way here and fun, but I'm sorry. <sighs> but happy new year. It's a brand new day, brand new lights, and hopefully you have a good one. She said that she hate me. I hate me too. Now, this is the reason why I change hotels. Remember? Yes, I just love this feeling. Okay, so 1st of January, we are somewhere in Nairobi. <laughs> I think it's called Mavimbi. It looks like a really nice place. It was suggested to me by Google and uh, a friend. So I'm going to check what this is about. Apparently, it's... Um, seafood restaurant very interesting you're gonna see just now hopefully it's gonna you know complement the nairobi trip perfectly after last night let's go fellas there's something about nairobi restaurant the decoration is on point unless for those i've visited as starter i was served shrimps something that i don't know the name and baby fish it's called sambaza in some areas of africa it was a beautiful combination of tilapia fish, some green, and chips. Of course, I always have to have two chips. Then I had the most delicious dessert I had had in a long time. I'm not sure what it is, but hey, this was fire. So Mavimi's decoration was peculiar. They are some of the most beautiful African paintings I've ever seen. That's tradition, fellas. You always have to take care of the security guard. This is a very nice place. We'll be back. You don't have a choice. Of course, I mean, you have to... I'm, I'm sure family must be very proud of you. Fellas, the biggest surprise was I was waiting for my Uber driver. Just got to the car and it was a lady at night. I mean, yeah, this is this is very uncommon in Africa, at least in most Africa that I know. And this lady, beautiful lady, was driving strangers in a car at night as an Uber driver. Okay, yeah, that's that's a very strong mindset. I like that. If you don't work, you don't eat. Yeah. Hopefully I can find the excitement I'm looking for. No shade. Yeah. Maybe I'm not going to the right places, you know. Maybe I just don't know. You know, maybe, maybe, you know, so I want to know today. I came to Kenya with so much excitement and I was looking forward to a tremendous experience. But I felt like I had not accomplished that. I had to extend my stay so I could find that rewarding thing I came for. I heard man when I chat and chip I come through like what's good These wigs get split Man better breeze and sprint It's long if I choose to bite down on these bricks Next is a lyrical 4-4 This fun park is called Two River Ferris Wheel I found a lot of people having a good time That's where we're going right now And I hope it's gonna be fun It's a bit rainy But that's okay We're gonna have a good time Freshly squeezed juice are far from the key to get. You see, fellas, Africa is not just about snakes and lions. We have good life out here. See that? 
Now, I wanted to get into the wheel and have a good time. But before that, you had to purchase a ticket. <laughs> the scary part begins. It's nice to just say fun, you know, feel like a kid again. You know, do simple things. Oh, uh oh. So I forgot to mention, I'm very scared of height. Uh, it's not very much my thing. Now I can feel it. Okay, this looked like a joke, but yeah, I truly am scared of heights, and it's a real phobia. So I just had to do all the funny sounds so it could look normal and not look ridiculous. I mean, imagine you just yeah, this thing breaks. Crack. Oh. Crazy imagination. And from high up there, I could see Nairobi. Such a beautiful sight. It was rainy, but very interesting. Very captivating. <laughs> so before we left, I had to do some other things. Come on. This was a beautiful place. And when the next time I'm going to get this opportunity anyway, I had to do this. Just like a child. It was amazing. That was really new. That was really, really nice. I enjoyed myself. Felt like a kid again. I guess it's time to go. 3rd of January 2024. I had come to Kenya looking for excitement. I was looking forward to a great experience because I had seen many videos in the past and many people talking about how beautiful party life is in Kenya and I wanted first hand to experience New Year's Eve in Kenya. I am living with a mixed feeling. However, what I will keep in my heart dearly is the treatment that I got, the amazing friendliness, the openness I saw within Kenyan people. I may have not had a tremendous party moment in Kenya, but I definitely felt peace and brotherhood. It was time to pack my stuff and leave Nairobi. <laughs> 